Every year, almost 2 million people attend the Great Minnesota Get-Together for 12 days of food and fun. There's one group that always draws a crowd, and that's the 4-H program. 4-H is one of the largest youth development organizations in the country. It teaches valuable life skills to young people around the world using hands-on projects that are practical and educational, but also fun for the kids. The State Fair is a chance for 4-Hers to show what they've learned through their project and livestock exhibits, demonstrations, performances, and much more. Hi, I'm your host, Libby Tate, here to take you on a tour of just some of the exciting 4-H activities at the State Fair. Sit back, relax, and let's take a look at what Minnesota 4-Hers have built, raised, grown, and created this year. Come along with me. Four H at the Minnesota State Fair is made possible by CHS, a global agribusiness owned by farmers, ranchers, and cooperatives across the United States. Minnesota Farmers Union, standing for agriculture, fighting for farmers. On the web at mfu.org. Minnesota Corn Growers Association, since 1978, dedicated to identifying and promoting opportunities for Minnesota corn farmers while enhancing quality of life. For nearly 100 years, Minnesota Farm Bureau has been working to preserve, promote, and strengthen American agriculture and share in the vision of strength and vitality for our communities. GNP Company, makers of locally raised, premium quality, golden plump and just bare chicken products, and proud sponsor of Brighter Futures, dedicated to healthy food, families, and farms in Minnesota since 1926. For the first four days of the fair, the livestock barns become home to 4-H project animals, housing beef and dairy cattle, goats, rabbits, sheep, and more. It's a little noisy and a little chaotic over here, but let's see if I can find some 4-Hers to talk to. Our first stop is in the sheep and poultry barn, which usually is full of chickens, turkeys, and other poultry. But this year there aren't any live birds at the fair because of the avian flu. Here's 4-H Ambassador Clarissa Walwante to tell us how poultry 4-Hers were able to participate at the fair. So this year they were not allowed to bring their birds to the fair like you can see. Um, they've actually taken over the cages spots with posters that they all created with different information about avian influenza, biosecurity, and a bunch of different, um, different projects. And then also for showmanship they brought pictures this year. Um, in these pictures, they would talk about their flock at home and all, kind of test their knowledge about their breeds and see how much they actually know. And then they, they've done Quiz Bowl with the public to get more people involved with the poultry industry. So has it been beneficial for them to actually take an educational kind of role in teaching the public about what's going on out there in the, with the avian flu? Yes, it's, it's definitely worked a lot. Like yesterday, we did, they did the Project Bowl, and usually the Project Bowl is just with them. Um, okay. competing against each other and um, yesterday they grabbed people from the public and tested their knowledge and a lot of people were shocked about the different facts that they never knew about so it was really cool and I think people are getting a real impact this year. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. So even if they can't bring culture to the fair this year, 4-Hers are still finding ways to share their knowledge with others through projects and demonstrations. Case in point, this 4-H'er -er has a very interesting demonstration for us. Can you tell us who you are and where you're from? Hi, I'm Ben Agecki from Fillmore County, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about good poultry biosecurity. Okay, so I actually get to be part of this because this year we're talking a lot about 4-H's motto, which is learn by doing. So if you could demonstrate to me what all this stuff is, and I'm actually going to get the gear on. Sounds good. So what this is, it's a kit that an inspector or a veterinarian would have in their car that they can bring with them. Okay. So first you would start with rubber boots. The reason for rubber, it's very easy to disinfect instead of leather. And so do they, do they take this to uh, farms that are infected or not infected? Both. Both, okay. So you'd start with your rubber boots, then you'd go through a foot bath, which contains some disinfectant. That way, if there are any germs on your rubber boots, those get taken off. Okay. Then you put on these plastic booties, which helps keep the manure out of the grooves in your boots. Gotcha. Makes sense. So next we're going to do our hands. So you start with hand sanitizer. Okay. Kill some Slug germs that way. 
and then with latex gloves. Okay. That this keeps doorknobs and other things that you grab onto out of the. All right. So do farmers, when they go into their barns, do they go through the same process too? Most of the time what farmers will do, farmers will have a special set of clothes just for in the barn, and then when they go out of the barn, they'll have a changing room or some sort of thing like that, okay. where they change clothes when they leave the barn. Okay. So they have two different sets of clothes so they don't have to keep buying all of this okay. stuff. Okay, makes sense. All right, what's next? So next, we're gonna do our head. So you can start with the hairnet. Got a lot reason, of, I've got a lot of hair. Yep. Yeah, the reason for the hairnet, um, there's certain things that can get stuck in your hair, and even though a person may not be subjected to that, they can bring that from farm to farm as well. Okay. So then we're going to be put on these glasses. Okay. This keeps harmful things out of your eyes when you're walking through. Okay. And then the, and the mask. The mask. Glad you don't have to put this on. You can talk through it. Yeah. This keeps all the harmful things out of your mouth from you inhaling them. Okay. And then, so then these go on over this, so yep. over, your, over your sleeve. So let's say if the vet was going to be handling all the birds, okay. you could put on the long cattle gloves. If the birds are up against your arms, you're not getting your clothes dirty, and then you can just peel them off and throw them away when you're done. Okay. So what I, I just have to ask you, so this is a really, really important topic for 4-H this year and for the, for the industry as well. What have you found to be beneficial? Has, has it been fun educating the public? Do they know a lot of what you're talking about? So since there's no birds this year, a lot of people are wondering why there are no birds. Right. And because of the high pathogenic avian flu, that's why they're not here. So this is one way that a lot of people are using to prevent more spreading of the avian flu. So how much research did you have to do to get all this put together? I use the USDA website. There is a lot of good information on there since they're the ones that are trying to treat the avian flu and prevent it further. Okay. Well, cool. Well, congratulations. I'm sure it's been a great fair for you, right? Yep. Keep edu educating the public. We need people to know more about what's, what's going on out there. We appreciate it. We move a couple buildings down to the Ag Star Arena and find the Dairy Showcase Awards Ceremony in full swing. Dairy Production Contest, Dairy Interview winner, and the National 4-H Dairy Conference. Afterwards, I caught up with the winner, Kayla Lighting. Her cow isn't so interested in an interview, but Kayla's enthusiastic about what she's learned and achieved in 4-H. So Kayla, you just won the Dairy Showcase. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you that's, so much. That's amazing. Um, there's a lot of people though out there that don't know what the showcase is. Could you explain a little bit more about it? The Dairy, the 4-H Dairy Showcase is basically the auction, like for the other breeds, and it's where dairy kids around the state of Minnesota are rewarded for doing the best that they can in every dairy activity and for being involved. And also for leadership, right? Yes, for leadership is definitely the biggest part of it. So has leadership um, pieces of 4-H been huge for you in your, in your life? Your yes, career? I've been very extremely involved in different things such as being a part of 4-H and being a different leader as president, vice president, secretary, historian, and junior leader of our club. And I've also taken different leadership roles in our, in our, um, our county as being a dairy PDC member for our county. And that's project development. Committee, yes, right? it is. Yeah. So on a personal level, how has 4-H changed your life? 4-H is definitely the biggest part of my life right now, and especially the dairy project within it. I've been involved in showing dairy cattle, especially for about 16 years. I started when I was two, and it's definitely given me some rewards throughout dairy judging. I've been to four national contests, and even now as a showcase member, I've been in showcase for five years, and it is the biggest honor just to win the showcase and say that all of my hard work and dedication has paid off. And how about lifelong skills? What have you learned? I've definitely learned a lot of communication skills throughout this, the 4-H program, especially in dairy judging. It's been a big part of my life, and that's, just, that's what made me decide of what I want to do in college. And I've also learned leadership, being involved in so many activities, and being one of the oldest members of my county dairy pro project right now. It is really important for me to help the younger kids out and teach them what I know. So what do you want to do with your future? How is 4-H how is going to help you in the next chapter? 4-H has helped me decide that I want to major in agricultural communications and marketing. And I also want to minor in animal science. And that's combining two of the things I love. 
So public speaking and like dairy judging and also being around animals in the dairy industry. Well, I'm sure you'll be wildly successful. Other successful 4-H'ers can be found with their beef and dairy cows and the cattle barn next door. But these animals are more than just a state fair exhibit for the kids. These are years-long projects that can lead to opportunities outside of 4-H, even ones you might not expect, like becoming royalty. So we are here with Emily Altenberg, and she is the reigning Minnesota Black Angus Queen, right? So congratulations on that, Thank and you, you. Just took, you just took that role when? June. In June, yeah. okay. So, and you have a, a beef, um, beef project here. Tell us a little bit about what you've got going um, on. She's my two-year-old cow calf. She's a registered Black Angus, and she got Champion Supreme overall. For wow, cow -calf. congratulations. Yeah, thank you. That's great. So, um, Black Angus Queen also yeah. has a champion. Very yeah. fitting. So, tell me about your experience in 4-H. How long have you been part of the project? Um, I've been in 4-H for about nine years now. Okay, and what are some of the, the key things that you've learned? What are, what are you going to take away from this experience? Um, teamwork and responsibility. So tell me a little bit more about teamwork. Um, well, especially when we come together at State Fair, our whole county comes together, and we have to work together to keep the stall clean and the cows clean, and yeah, big part. And how about responsibility? Um, we got to make sure you take care of your animals every day feed them and water them, keep them clean. Yeah, and responsibility to the animal and yep. the animal responds to you. Yep. Very cool. So um, with those kinds of lifelong skills, what are, what are you looking to do in the future? Well, I want to do a lot with cows for sure, um, like breeding and stuff when I go off to college. Right. And in the next year as queen, what will your roles be? Um, mostly to like mostly. go, especially here, this is a big part, to go and be part of the show and promote the breed. Okay, so you're so you're sort of the face for Black yeah. Angus for the next year. How cool. Well, I hope you enjoy that and you've got beautiful animals. What are their names? Um, Powerlass and Sadie. Very cool. Well, they're beautiful animals. Congratulations Thank on a you. great state fair. Thank you. And good luck to you. Thank you. 4-H always looks for ways to make learning fun. One tried and true way of doing that is to make it into a contest. Bailey Peterson is a participant in the Project Bowl competition, and she shares a bit of what she knows with us. So I hear from around the barns that you are quite the Knowledge Bowl girl. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about Quiz Bowl. What do you do? So you have teams of four or three if you don't have enough people, and you go around to different competitions, and you answer questions that are about um, beef, cattle, swine, or pigs. Uh, goats and sheep, and so you, you have to know all of those. Yeah, you wow. know a bunch of things about all of them. Okay, and you buzz in and answer questions um, to get points as a team, as in a competition. So, how did your team do? Uh, we made it to third at state. Wow, that's awesome. So, just give me an example of one of the one of the crazy questions you might get asked that you have to know the answer for, um, and fast, right? Is, you have to know fast. What are the four compartments of a ruminant stomach? And we have to name them in order. It's reticulum, rumen, reticulum, omasum, abomasum. Wow, and they all do different things. Yep. What mm -hmm. was the first stomach? Abomasum calf. was the first one developed as a calf. Very good. That's, Im that's really impressive. So um, with all this cool stuff you've been doing with Quiz Bowl, you've been traveling with your friends a lot, it sounds like. Yep. How often do you get together with your buddies to, to practice? Uh, we get together once a week throughout the year okay. and our, our first competition is in beef at the beef expo in October oh, wow. it's actually here at the state fair so. cool mm -hmm. so what's been the best part about quiz bowl uh, probably being with all your friends and you get to know them and new new people too that want like like to join so you get to know them all and you learn a lot so what kinds of things have you learned that you think will be important for you to know later on Oh, a bunch about my animal, because when people come up and ask you questions, you want to know about, like, you want to know those answers. So. so do you plan to educate the public with your, with your knowledge mm -hmm. and skills? Yes, we cool. do all the time, yeah. So what else, what other skill sets has, has being part of Quiz Bowl given you? Um, knowledge, obviously, yep. um, confidence, and public speaking skills, because when you got you got to tell the judge the answers, and there's people watching, and you just, 
you get to know other people and you're comfortable with them. Well, that's super important for anything you want to do, and I'm so glad that 4-H was able to help you get that. Yeah. So congratulations on an awesome fair. Thank you. Awesome quiz bowl results, and I wish you all continued success for years to come. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Livestock is a cornerstone of 4-H, but there's so much more diversity to the organization than a lot of people realize. By taking a trip over to the famous 4-H building in the other corner of the fairgrounds, we can learn about some other ways 4-Hers can participate in hands-on learning. The 4-H building is a landmark of the State Fair, housing almost 3,000 exhibits and hosting hundreds of demonstrations, performances, and other fun activities. Let's take a look inside. One of the first things we see in the 4-H building is the State Arts In Program, an arts experience where youth get to have a role in every aspect of producing a musical show, which is performed several times a day throughout the run of the State Fair. I'm not sure that's who I am. I just want to go someplace where there's no problems, like, like outer space. <laughs> After watching a show, I find one of the performers to talk to. This is Susie Lindbergh, here to tell us a little more about participating in the Arts In program. There's how many kids in Arts In? There's 69 from all across the state. And so we have performers, we have behind the scenes people. Technical I mean, crew, costumers, and instrumentalists. So you're telling me that if anybody is interested in any kind of arts, Technical Anything. building props, mm -hmm. costumes, mm -hmm. right? There's They're all put together them. by hand. and That is very stylish, by the way. Yep. Very stylish indeed. Great design, I'd have to say. <laughs> so you come from a long line, as I understand it, of arts in folks. Yep, right. I started in my county, and then I saw that my sisters were in state arts in, so that made me want to try it also. Now tell me a little bit about the behind the scenes, before the fair starts. What, what does this all entail? We have a prep week where... All the performers get their choreography and the songs. We have to learn all of it, learn, our, learn all of our parts, because we have different singing parts, like altos, sopranos, and then the guys. And so yeah, they have to learn that by themselves. The technical crew tears down the whole stage from the last year and wow. puts together a whole new one. And then the costumers put together whatever costume they decide on. The guys and girls, it varies usually every year. And then... The instrumentalists have to learn all their music and practice, and just like we do. And that's all in eight days? Yep. Eight days? Yep. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So with eight days being sort of all together in one small space, what does that do for you guys? How, how is it? How is the interaction with everybody else? It really brings us all together as a family, and we just all support each other and love each other for who we are. and. It's just really nice to be So there. when you go through, and then on top of it, 12 days at the Minnesota State Fair, mm -hmm. performing together every day, twice a day. Well, and then when we're not performing together, we go out, walk around the fair, experience new things together, and just, it's a really good experience. Well, that's cool. Well, we're so happy to have you here. Your performance was amazing. Thank you. And can't, see, can't wait to see you at 5 o'clock. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. In the upstairs of the 4-H building is the cafeteria, where 4-Hers can eat and relax with their friends. In a small room off to the side, Chef Noah Barton is teaching a group of kids basic cooking skills in preparation for the Chef for a Day cook-off down on the main floor. Like cilantro or mint or parsley, any of those. We generally just soak those in water, uh, and that helps the dirt fall off of them, and then rinse them really well.
While kids are busy preparing their entries for contest, I chat with Noah about the event. Basically what they do is they come up with a salad or an omelet or they put together one dish. They have about 40 minutes to put that together. Uh, and they make Do they know what it is before they get here? Some of the teams do, some of them don't. It, okay. uh, some of the teams are a little more prepared for it than some of them just come in and see what happens. Um, this is actually part of Cooking Matters, which is through the University of Minnesota Extension. Right. Um, and they came out talking about the different programs that they do. This happens to be one of the ones I could find time to to actually get in and do. Well, it's really nice that you chose to give back to, give back to 4-H. Because okay. you're not a 4-H'er yourself. I'm not a 4-H'er. I do have 4-H'ers in my family. My wife was a 4-H'er, but I was not a 4-H'er. Well, well, welcome, welcome to the you. fold. Welcome to the fold. So the other thing that's big um, in 4-H is we're trying to teach and we're trying to educate folks on how to eat healthy. So talk a little bit about how this can feed into that. So yeah, one of the great things about this is we talk about the MyPlate program and we talk about you know utilizing the different food groups. Um, when we actually, when the 4-H'ers make the salad, we ask them about, you know, how did you consider the, the different food groups in making this? Um, and it gives us an opportunity to talk a little bit about nutrition, talk about assembling a healthy plate and a healthy meal. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks Great. so much for being here. Thanks so much for giving back. Thank you. After the judging is done, the results are all in. I get a chance to taste the winning team's dish with them. It's good. It's got a little bit of zest to it. Yeah. Eh. It's smooth. I don't even like peppers, and this is okay. <laughs> Did you want some more, Libby? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll take one more. I'll take one more. I like salad in general. Final stop is to see the Rube Goldberg competition. These fascinating contraptions are all designed to pull off a very simple task. Put toothpaste on a toothbrush. are busy showing their machines to the judges. So I asked Mark Hagen how the Rube Goldberg competition came about. I'm an extension educator with 4-H serving the University of Minnesota. I'm on the state STEM team. One of the charges of our state STEM team was to create some new programming offerings. Uh, we discussed looking at all of our aquatic robotics, our robotics, uh, the different things that we have been offering, and we wanted to offer something that was clear and concise that could reach a new audience uh, with something that would be age appropriate for our younger middle school audience. Rube Goldberg is something that happens in other networks, and it's something that we haven't done in youth development. So what we wanted to do was turn that into a 4-H club experience. Wow, that's really cool. Why is it important? Well, in the 4-H world, we think that the project learning is the best way to get your hands dirty and actually understand what you're doing. Uh, doing something with the Rube Goldberg and, and working with a team of other young people coached by a volunteer, it allows you to, to do something that you haven't done before. Uh, looking forward to their future careers, uh, these kids are going to need to have some STEM competencies. They're going to be able to Absolutely. sit down and look at something that's not working and make it work. Cool. Very cool. Well, we're super excited. We're gonna actually going to go check out more of the competition and some of the judging. Thanks so much. Thank you. During a break in judging, I set up a quick conversation with one of the teams who had built an impressive multi-level contraption for this contest. Hello, Minty Meeker Candy. How are you? Good. How about you? We're doing fine, thanks. And we had to stop by. We saw you in competition for the Rube Goldberg competition, right? The Rube yep. Gold yep. Goldberg contest. So, did you have fun today? Yes. Did everything go according to plan? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> well, how about this? We're going to find out a little bit more about it, but before we do, let's find out more about you. I want to find out where, who you are and where you're from. Why don't you start? I'm Hattie, and I'm from Candy, Ohio County. I'm Darren, and I'm from Meeker County. I'm Daniel, and I'm from Meeker County. I'm Ryan, and I'm from Meeker County. Awesome. What do you have to achieve at the end of this? contest. We have to put toothpaste on a toothbrush. Okay. We have to have 10 steps. 
steps at least. At least 10 steps. Okay, so how long did you guys work on this? I'd say about 24 hours. Okay, 24 hours over a lot of months. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. Of course, I can't let them go without having them demonstrate the machine first. So here's the million dollar question. Can we see it run? Yes. yes. Awesome. That is that that's complicated. That is complicated and probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yep. Wow. Nicely done. Nicely done. Of the different projects and activities we've seen today, they all have one thing in common. They're hands-on, immersing kids in the tasks of raising cattle, putting on a performance, cooking a meal, or engineering a solution to a problem by letting kids teach themselves with a little bit of help from volunteers and older kids 4-H'ers not only learn the projects they're interested in but they also learn skills they'll use for the rest of their lives like confidence, teamwork, leadership and so much more. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you again next year. Until then, take it away Ambies! Learning by doing! Woo! Visit pioneer.org slash 4-H to watch this program online. Learn more about 4-H online or by visiting your local University of Minnesota Extension and Outreach Center. Four H at the Minnesota State Fair is made possible by CHS, a global agribusiness owned by farmers, ranchers, and cooperatives across the United States. Minnesota Farmers Union, standing for agriculture, fighting for farmers. On the web at mfu.org. Minnesota Corn Growers Association, since 1978, dedicated to identifying and promoting opportunities for Minnesota corn farmers while enhancing quality of life. For nearly 100 years, Minnesota Farm Bureau has been working to preserve, promote and strengthen American agriculture and share in the vision of strength and vitality for our communities. GNP Company, makers of locally raised premium quality Golden Plump and Just Bear Chicken products and proud sponsor of Brighter Futures, dedicated to healthy food, families and farms in Minnesota since 1926.